Alrighty, Void. Well, back on it. And this is where the decline in quality begins. A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. And I will say, this one I haven't seen as many times as the other ones. I've seen the first four ad nauseum. This one, I've only seen a handful of times. When I first watched these as a much younger man, like sixth grade-ish, I think I stopped at four. Just because I think uh, my, I was watching them primarily with my father and we just got distracted and started watching other things. But years later, uh, end of high school, when I started working at a video store and had free reign to see whatever movie I wanted, well, Nightmare on Elm Street 5 was one I quickly you saw. I will say they didn't actually have number six at that particular store, so I didn't get to see that one for a long time thereafter, but five and mm, I didn't care much for it. And yeah. Well, I will say my opinion has softened a bit on it. It isn't nearly as bad as my memory keeps making it out to be. There are some good ideas here. But execution, 50-50. Now, I will say the special effects quality is still definitely high. That Nightmare never really dropped the ball on that. And Robert England is still giving it his all. Well, this one picks up pretty much a couple years after the last one. The movie came out in 1989, but I think I read it was set in 92, so which would imply that Alice was a beginning high school, and now she's at the, I think, is graduating right now, so enough time for her to have recovered. Well, anyway, she begins having nightmares again where she doesn't feel in control. Well, mostly because they're not her nightmares. Freddy is now returning, but in the dreams of her unborn child, and is trying to essentially convert and eventually control him while using Alice's power to bring other people in. So, it's got some interesting concepts there, especially the fact, uh, go, banking on the fact that they claim that unborn babies dream, and, well, now uh, that is making pretty much waking dreams happen for Alice, and anyone else who falls asleep could be then brought into her uh, the, the dreams of the unborn. And, well, pray for Freddy. Meanwhile, she's, Alice starts seeing uh, a, like a six or seven year old version of uh, the name, a kid named Jacob, who is, well, the kid in question. So, premise is interesting, and that does okay on it. Now, I will say, I will give this one uh, some more props for bringing back Freddy better than they did in the and number four. I was complaining a lot last time about how they, they fire, flame pissed him back to life. This one, he essentially, uh, essentially gets reborn from a, a dream version of his mother to be reborn, which also gives him a weakness of finding and putting his mother to rest could essentially make her a more of a threat to him. So essentially he gets reborn that way, but is latched onto Alice as he's still not very powerful, can't attack her directly, so is attacking the unborn Jacob. So they give some interesting imagery with his rebirth. So that was working for me. I will say the movie mostly just has some overly cheesy bits. Particularly the Super Freddy scene. That was a bit much. Even the director has said that it was probably a bit much, but he's a comic book nerd, so he had to put it in there. So, yeah. It gets, starts getting silly. I mean, Freddy's had a sense of humor for the last couple movies, but this is where the first one was really just silly. And I will give this one props for... Uh, so having Alice uh, return from the next movie and not immediately killing her off, she actually does very well for herself here, so appreciate that. Um, so this one, it's, it is lackluster compared to like three and even four, but it's not bad. 
as, at least as bad as I remembered it being. So there's some decent imagery and another thing this one has a much lower body count than a lot of the other nightmare films like usually you'd get uh several good ones it's only like three deaths in this one and they're creative but uh it's not bad i'll give it five MacGuffins. it's okay it doesn't live up to the other ones I know, like, last uh, review, it sounded like I was really bashing Mandy and you gave it six. Because that movie was... It was quality. The lady that they put on there, it just... For me, didn't resonate. This one, it's not quality. I can't pretend it is. But it hits a, a cheesy sweet spot for me that was working all right. And that's largely due to Robert England. He is really a pleasure to see on screen. So... I can give this one five MacGuffins. Now, I remember disliking the sixth one quite a bit, so I think I've only seen that one once, maybe twice. So we'll see if uh, maybe I've softened on that one also. I'm really curious on them. Well, uh, I think that's all I have to say on Nightmare 5, The Dream Child. But, uh, yeah, yeah. If you're working, if you've seen the first four, you might as well see this one. Three, four, and five string together in one coherent plot line, so they are worth seeing as a trilogy. All right, that's about all I got right now. So I'll see you later, Void. Got another Shutter Trek I'm going to be watching tonight, so I'll give you a review of that tomorrow. See you then.